I had uh, participated in the launch of the of the launch vehicle and being on the Marshall team. Obviously, uh, once the uh, the crew was in orbit, we'd kind of finished our launch exercises and got to come home. Uh, I was actually back in Huntsville at the time of the uh, of the landing and watched it all as it was happening on uh, on television. It was certainly uh, to say it was exciting would be a total understatement of the fact. I think that one of the things that I do remember very vividly was soon after the landing, walking out and looking at the moon and and knowing that there were people there that uh, that I had known, knowing that I had had a opportunity to participate in that program from literally from the very beginning of it up to that point in time and looking at the moon and knowing that was probably one of the most humbling experiences that uh, I can recall ever having because it was a not only a sense of personal satisfaction it was a sense of uh, I think also national pride that uh, all of us that were associated with that program were needless to say were very pleased with at the time and I still appreciate it. At the time the, of the, uh, the lunar landing uh, I was associated with the Apollo launch vehicle uh, here at Marshall. More specifically I was in charge of the engineering and testing from the project office side of the second stage which was built by Rockwell out in uh, Seal Beach, California. I had been through the early development of that, uh, that launch vehicle, the early design, testing, building of the flight articles, and then the early flights of the Apollo vehicle. So I had seen the, the program basically from an idea up through, the, uh, up through those early launches. When I look back at the um, at basically the industry and the capability that we were building at that time, and all of the infrastructure that uh, that went into uh, being able to accommodate the Apollo program, and namely the facilities, the manufacturing facilities, but also had we had the uh, computational capability then we have now, that job would have been significantly easier. We might have sharpened our pencil too much had we had it then. We, we at Marshall were, were accused of building uh, our launch vehicles much stronger than they needed to be. That turned out before the Apollo program was over to have been a real asset because we were able to carry heavier weights, we were able to carry longer vehicles, and it made the vehicles extremely more uh, uh, more versatile and more accommodating to wind conditions, weather conditions, and this type. Today we, we tend to want to sharpen our pencils probably too much, but if I look back at that point in time, we literally were having to build the standards, the equipment that, that we were using to test in many cases was as complicated as was the, the parts or the engine components, or the engines, or the structural components that we were trying to build. So there was a lot learned because we didn't have all of the fine tools we have today. And as a, as a young engineer, that was probably the best thing could have happened to literally hundreds of thousands of us around the, uh, in the government as well as in industry, of we having to build the tools as long, along with building the products. I guess in summary I would say I would have loved to have had some of the um, uh, computational tools back then we have now. Back then a Frieden was, uh, was uh, almost a status symbol and uh, slide rules were the name of the day. I think there were two very fundamental things that were that were at work. We had a national commitment, we had a congressional commitment, and more importantly we had a presidential commitment. The second thing that in my judgment made it possible and certainly the part that uh, centered here in Huntsville 
was the leadership of Dr. Von Braun. He was a, uh, a master leader. He was a uh, superb engineer. He was a visionary. And he was a probably one of the best technical coordinators, and that's a, almost an unfair statement, to, uh, to manage people, to manage large programs, and to assist in the management of, uh, of large contractors. The fact that uh, we had to literally build an industry, we had to build a, almost a complete infrastructure relative to test stands, manufacturing facilities, launch facilities, to be able to do all of that in the time frame that we did it was still, in my judgment, a, um, almost as significant a feat as the fact of going to the moon, of just getting all of those facilities and all of those teams, because literally we were building an, an industry, a very new industry, that had only started just a few, like 10 or 15 years uh, earlier than the, uh, than the lunar landing. So to me, those were the key things that had to happen. And fortunately, we had the leadership in the country, in Congress, and, uh, and in the program with which to, uh, to make that happen. And certainly, we had an excellent administrator and James Webb to, uh, to help lead that industrial team also. He was, the, uh, to me, one of the most uh, intellectual people, but yet one of the most real and down-to-earth people. I had the opportunity to, to work with him. I had the opportunity to travel with him a lot. And for a young engineer that was in his late 20s, early 30s, at that time frame, I consider probably one of the luckiest uh, probably events of my life it was being able to to know the man and to work for him and to uh, to travel with him. He loved to fly uh, as much as um, probably any person I've ever seen. If he had a second hobby short of boating and his family, it would probably be weather and its association uh, with flying. I'll never forget, uh, we were flying back from the West Coast one time, and this was when Learjets had just just come out. There were only a few of them in the, in the Southeast, and we had uh, had one. We had gone to the West Coast and back. We had to do in a very short time. As we were flying back, we were at about 40, 41,000 feet, and uh, we came up on an absolute classic anvil cloud. And this cloud towered probably another eight, ten thousand feet above us, and we just circled right around, just under the, uh, the 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 trailing edge of the anvil of that cloud. And the two of us sat there, and he gave me a description of every air current, every phenomena that was going on in that particular weather cell. He literally took that cloud that literally went all the way from the ground up to probably 48, 49,000 feet. And he dissected it vertically and then dissected it horizontally. And he could point it out where the hail was being generated in the backside and the air currents and how they would sweep the rain particles up into the colder air and uh, keep that circulation going until large hail was generated and then it would fall out uh, to the earth. and I remember to this day uh, exactly how that those weather phenomena uh, work, only because that he was such an articulate uh, instructor. He was articulate in literally everything that uh, that he did. Extreme sense of humor. He had a, just a way of turning tense moments into uh, into manageable uh, situations. So, uh, and, and like I say, he was, he was just that relaxed with people, and I've uh, never seen him uh, look down on anyone, regardless of, uh, of the positions that worked with him. He would, uh, he would stop and talk to you. He would, uh, I remember even before the Apollo program, 
when uh, he and General Medeiros would come around through the labs. They would walk through, and he would he loved to stop and talk to the people, the technicians on the floor. And as a as a young college graduate, that was um, impressive to me to have him to see how warm he was with people, but yet how genuine he was as a uh, as a person. It was exhilarating to just work here because you just, you didn't even think about uh, working eight hours a day. You just worked as long as it took to, uh, to do the job. Those of us that were young people, there were a few older people, and especially the Germans, that we got to work side by side, directly with and or directly under, that taught us an awful lot about um, solving technical problems, about dedication to, to the job, but yet they were all very dedicated to their families. And uh, that made a significant impression. The other thing that I think was significant is the responsibilities that were given to each of us. We were given a job, you were allowed to make mistakes, you were allowed to fail, as long as you learn from your failures or learn from your mistakes and then went on and built better products uh, as a result of that. The fact that we had an absolute goal, even when we were a part of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency in the mid to late 50s up until uh, the 60s when we moved over to NASA, we knew exactly what our jobs were, we knew what goals we had to meet, we knew what schedules, we had to make, and everyone believed in them, and everyone was dedicated to, uh, to making it happen. And the German team and, and the leadership of von Braun, that just easily permeated all levels of the uh, organization. So there was no, we didn't have to worry about how to motivate people. They were absolutely motivated from the top, and I mean national top, all the way down through the von Braun team down to those of us that were turning the cranks and, uh, and making the hardware happen. We created a goal after Apollo to, to build a totally reusable launch vehicle. Uh, we studied that for a number of years, and a few years, and uh, came up with a fully reusable space shuttle. We presented that to Congress and the budget was too high. We cut the budget in half, we did away with the reusable booster, and we ended up with a, uh, with a uh, throwaway external tank and reusable solids and an orbiter as we know it today. Now, we were absolutely aware of Woodstock. Uh, we were absolutely aware of the, uh, the good and the bad side of the Vietnam War, but I could not see any um, deterioration of our dedication or our ability or our commitment to make our obligations come, uh, come to fruition. Like I said, we were quite aware of what was going on in the world, but we did not let it uh, deter us. personal pride, the satisfaction of seeing a job happen, uh, a very difficult job, a major undertaking, and probably one of the most complex things that man had done uh, at that time. Seeing that come to a successful fruition was probably one of the most exciting things that, uh, that I have been a part to in, uh, in my career. But to me, almost equal to that, was the fact that we had a national commitment. We had a space race, there was no question. It was a race. It was one that we were dedicated to win and did. Uh, but I think seeing the nation uh, pull together all the way from the president to the Congress, the OMB, uh, and into the NASA organizations and all of the industrial base that supported us in doing that 
to me was a very satisfying time and a very uh, exciting time to be a part of.